God bless us all. Oh, I'm taking notes for Karen. <laughs> oh, thank you. She, invested, she, you, she attested you the, me. Yeah, she attested me. Because you are, you are the me. clerk. Yep. Thank you. Dollar right. fifty for you. Dollar Ooh. fifty for you. Um, all right. So let's go ahead and convene the meeting as of what is it? Six twenty. Yeah. Um, for Six, the yeah. March fifteenth, uh, twenty twenty one Board of Selectmen's meeting, please. Uh, Rise and join me for saying the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. So, uh, announcements. Um, first of all, let's please take a moment of silence uh, for State Trooper Tamara Bucci, who uh, recently died and tragically while conducting her duties. Um, she was based at the Brookfield Barracks after finishing her training. So. Thank you. Um, we have a uh, planned budget meeting for the 20th of May, is that correct? Yes, um, it's, it's a presentation to the residents of the upcoming budget for the annual town meeting. It'll be at the elementary school and it'll start at 6 p.m. Great, so at 6 p.m. May 20th, Brookfield Elementary School, outstanding. Um, Linda, do you have a report regarding yes, the warrants? Yes, I do. Um, last Tuesday I was in and I, I had reviewed the, um, some warrants and everything was fine, so I'd sign them. And so I, I would like a motion for an expense warrant for 3822 for $465,285.53. A payroll warrant for 3922 for $188,677.70 and a withholding warrant for $3922 for $31,462.33. And, and do we need to vote those or she just provides the report? Oh, she, she just provides the yeah, report. Yeah, that's all we need right. to vote so, um, so on to the new business. And then uh, is it the next meeting that we have the old business? Um, things like the reports on where we are with, with former Warren articles and the like? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, so we've got in front of us the uh, other post-employment benefits trust documents. Uh, and can you talk a little bit about this? Um, so the town adopted um, chapter 32 the section 20 which allows um, a city or town to provide other post-employment benefits in so doing you're required to form a trust the document that you have before you is the legal document that forms the actual trust um, the trust is the owner and keeper of the funds on behalf of the town that way it cannot be appropriated or misappropriated for anything other than its intended purpose. So the trust holds the funds and the funds sit in the bank and mm -hmm. are invested under the um, trustee, which is the treasurer. Okay, and just so that folks understand what post-employment benefits were obligated, what obligations we need to meet in the intent of having a trust versus paying it out of operational funds. Okay, so other post-employment benefits are benefits that occur after retirement. Um, that's, that's not a pension, fundamentally? No, it is not a pension, oh. no. Um, I, I, it's, it's, beyond, it's beyond a pension. I, I don't have a good definition for that yeah. right now. My, my, understanding of it, my understanding of it is it's mostly things like like uh, retiree health care. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. and, and things like that. Because I know that we had 
Um, historically in this town, we funded post-employment benefits, things like our, our share of retiree health care mm -hmm. and, and, and items like that out of our operational budget. Right. And yeah. the intent of doing this as a trust fund, mm -hmm. and, and in essence, it's, it insulates us from the impact of the retirees. It ensures that there's solvency to support those post-employment mm -hmm. benefits. Excellent definition. Yes. All yes. of that. That's exactly mm -hmm. what okay. it does, yeah. yes. Um, so, so we have currently, um, we need to fund this. We don't know what our actual liability will be in the future. So right. one of the requirements is to have an actuarial study done, which we've already designated a company to do that, and the treasurer is working on getting the data for them in anticipation of the upcoming annual town meeting where we're required to fund this study. This is required by law, it's done twice. Uh, it's done a full study one mm -hmm. year and then a an audit of that yeah. study the second year. So the price changes annually, but it's a requirement yeah. of, of this. That will tell us what we are going to need and approximately when we're mm -hmm. going to need it. Then we fund the OPEB, which is what its acronym is. Um, we fund the OPEB trust for a future so that we can mm -hmm. we can then access the funds to supply the benefits. Now this includes the teachers also, doesn't it? I don't know the answer. I, for, I, from the elementary school, think, yes. yes. From the does. regional school system, no. no. From the elementary, correct. Yeah. Right, and and that's that's actually where like our largest like post employment obligation yeah. is. So you're absolutely correct. Yeah, I thought it was the elementary. And yeah. uh, and so it, it looks like the the documents that we're reviewing and then. The other is the investment policy. So the trust itself right. needs to be signed by the board, but the investment policy is signed by, by the, treasurer. the treasurer. Correct. But she wanted you to have it so that you could see what the policy is, and she didn't want to just, you know. No, I, and actually, it's good because, so frankly, I would have been very concerned if we didn't have some form of investment policy, and it looks like the yeah. investment policy that she's using is one that, it looks like it's it's one that's been advised on through the Commonwealth Financial Network. Yes, and it's it's one that so is compliant. This, this is one that was provided by. It's kind of a template, and we sort of you know we, we doctored it so that it right. it would meet yeah. Brookfield's needs. Mm -hmm. um, right, but it is has been it, it, invested. It, it, right, it, it ensures that it's that we're compliant with all of the requirements. Yes. it's been invested by town council. Um, I've used this same document in two other towns right. and same town council, so <laughs> I'm pretty comfortable with it. Right, okay. right, and so, and it includes things like what the portfolio balance mm -hmm. will look like now. Mm -hmm. um, so Amy has worked with this before. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, so. So in the actual trust documentation, um, and this is a trust and agreement. Yes. And this is with, and this just establishes the existence of the trust itself. Yes, this create this legally creates the trust. The town meeting took the vote, mm -hmm. they gave you the go ahead to follow through with this, and this is the trust document that oh. creates the trust. Okay. I'll have to, to be read, the keeper of the, read some more of the funds on behalf okay. of the residents and employees of the town. Okay. And and functionally, just to give like on a very high level, in essence, this makes the treasurer the trustee for the OPEB fund. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Which is how you set it up in your mm -hmm. vote for the town. Yep. Meeting. Okay. Right. And which is again based off of the. The current guidelines and mass mass general law. Mm -hmm. So we'll need a motion to sign. Right. To sign. It. So yeah. So we we'll, we need a motion to um, to uh, um, approve. Now is it all three of us that need to sign, or I is believe it, it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah. So we need a motion to sign um, for the uh, uh, for the. Uh, Declaration of trust and agreement for the uh, OPEB trust. Okay, um, I would like to have. I um, will make a motion to um, for the board of selectmen to try to uh, sign the OPEB trust investment policy nope, statement. Not no, investment policy. actually, okay. the, uh, the we need to oh, sign. Oh. Sorry. Okay. Okay. The, uh, oh, okay. the declaration right. of trust and agreement. Oh, okay. All right. 
uh, I'd like to make a motion for the Board of Selectmen to sign the Declaration of Trust and Agreement for Employment OBEG. Is that right now? Yeah, yeah. for the other for the other post employment benefits. Oh, for the other post employment benefits. I will second that motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. That's a wrap. So where was our page that you have? Oh, you got the page. Here's the signature page. Okay. So the next thing is the MIA health insurance rates for I'm sorry, I almost skipped over. Appointment for uh We've got an appointment document for Michelle Mandela for Beach Committee. Can I get a motion to uh, appoint her to the uh, Beach okay. Committee? I will make a motion to uh, appoint Michelle Mandela for the Beach Committee. Uh, I will second. Sorry. Thank you. I'll second the All motion. in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, quick note. Yes. Um, last name is spelled wrong on the document. Okay. Oh, there's an extra U in there. So Just put a single line through the U. No, it's it's out of order. The vowels are out of order. Oh, they're totally out of order. Yeah. So put a single line through your entire last name and hand through your that? last name. Yes, you absolutely can do that. I'm sorry, that's quality documentation. <laughs> Habits. Single line, correct yes, it. You can date it. Single line, correct <laughs> date and initial. Initial. <laughs> <laughs> and initial the change. Yep. <laughs> That's very funny. Okay. It's because your Did last we name uses every single vowel in the <laughs> alphabet. Why is only sometimes a vowel, so it doesn't count? Uh, here's the rest of it. Great. Great. Mm -hmm. So, um, and did we get a vote on the uh, appointment? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. We did. So that's all set. Um, next on the order is the uh, MIA health insurance rates. Um, As you can see, they're going up considerably. Yeah, it's a seven and a half percent increase. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So last year we had no increase, correct? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I it was, it no, was almost I nothing. Think it, it was like maybe one percent. Maybe a little bit. Okay. And I have a question. You did the insurance uh, committee? Did they meet on this to discuss these rates? I'm not familiar with an insurance committee, and the rates are what they are. Yeah, but, you, but usually, though, rates. but usually they will get together, and we Who have like is the insurance oh, committee. Oh, um, well, I'm on it for. Usually, have one representative for the police. You have one for the highway. You have somebody like for the to the employees up here at the town hall. You have a. Um, retiree from the town hall. When was the last time this committee met? Oh, we met. Did we meet last year? Last year or the year before? And usually um, we'll meet ahead of time for what the rates are and then they will, um, the ones that, for the teachers, they will bring this, uh, the rep from the teachers, they will bring back these rates to the teachers. Hmm. Now we've had an insurance committee for a long time. Interesting. So the sign commitment is due on or before April 1st. Do we have another meeting before April 1st? I don't think so. No, no. no well, we can go ahead with it, I mean. But another year, though, we should. I mean, I mean. so you can't reject the rates. That's oh, right, I unless you want to go yeah. out to bid. Well, oh, right, no, and we don't, no, have, enough, we don't have enough time to go out for yeah. bid, no. fundamentally. No, mm -hmm. I understand that totally. But usually there was a meeting, and, you know, they'll bring this back, and sometimes if they had any objections. So do we need to look at going out to bid next year, I guess, would be my question. Well, I have no well, idea. So the reason the rates are gone up is based on the number of claims yeah. made over yeah. the last okay. year. So you can go out to bid and find out you have no increase because no. you didn't have any claims this yeah. year, or you can have several people get very, very ill or yeah. injured. Right. And so we it's kind of a, it's kind of a shot in the dark. And we right. usually stay with Maya because they're they're the, they're the lowest. Nobody can outbid them, so we usually do stay with them because that's from Mass Municipal Association. Right. So we stay we we've, we've stayed with them for years. We had tried a few years ago uh, to get involved with, like, you know, the, uh, the teachers at Tantasco, and they didn't want to get involved with it. So, you know, we've tried to get in with other towns, but, you know, they, so we would have, you know, a bigger group to try to get, you know, a smaller, you know, a smaller rate. Right. So, okay. 
So they went up what seven percent? You said mm -hmm. seven and a half percent. Seven and a half. Wow. So um, can I get a motion to sign for acceptance of the rates? Yes, I will give you a motion to give you uh, to sign for the Maya Health Insurance rates for FY twenty three. I will second that motion. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, one thing I would like to at least take a look at, and this is something that maybe um, Amy could work on for next year, mm -hmm. not for this year, um, is to see if if Maya has like a fourth plan fundamentally or a third plan fundamentally. Mm -hmm. They've got an HMO here and a PPO. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if they offer a high deductible plan. I don't think so. But I don't. No. You know, I've never seen more than two plans no. offered. Really? No, that's um, it. I, unless it was a, it was a much higher plan. Yeah. Like, no, I think those are the only ones. But I, I can I can find. We could out. just I, just ask because it would enable people to go ahead and if we did that, we would also probably want to see if there was a way to offer people a, an individual health care spending savings account. Mm -hmm. And some people prefer to do the high deductible and health care savings that's account. Right. Um, it is because through, you've got lower monthly costs, but then the money is yours to spend how you want to fundamentally. Is I know it, we've talked about that in the past because we used to have um, used to have a representative that used to help us out, and uh, and he said a lot of the communities really don't get involved with that. What were you saying? Is Adam? this through the Blue Cross network? It is. It is. Yeah. Yeah. So it might be worth if there are other networks out there too. And then see how they compare. I know networks could be a no, Adam. As I monster. said, this is the other ones cannot compare with Maya. We've been with Maya probably for over twenty years ago. They come in with all. They always come in with the lowest rates because we used to have a representative that would help us out. You know, we can, yeah. If it's other if it's networks, done, other networks, other um, networks. I can I can inquire of, of right. Maya and see what they offer. Um, yeah. I know that a lot of towns are in co-ops. And they're self-funded, mm -hmm. but they use Blue Cross and Blue Shield, Shield. Yeah, as well. Yeah, because of the the services offered, you you get a lower deductible mm -hmm. or a lower fee, but you don't mm -hmm. get the same number of um, services and the same range mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. options. Yeah. And yeah. I think that's one of the reasons. Well, that's why we stay with yeah. yeah. Th that's Blue that's Blue also if we, if we can kind of start this little, maybe a little earlier next year that mm. that information be found brought up to the members of the town mm. and then get an opinion an idea of or is it worth the lower rate but even though you lose well, less is it worth to, the higher rate yeah. to have more yeah well and that's why I'm saying rather than like that. that's why I'm saying rather than rather than necessarily change the plan see if there's a third alternative yeah. that we could yep. offer that was more cost effective because yeah. I think Adding that choice a big problem with the unions yeah. if you try and change. Oh, right. Well, well, I know, but that's, oh, why, that's what I'm saying. That's is that, why we is never that, really changed it too much. Right, but the, and that's why I'm looking at it from the standpoint of added selection mm -hmm. versus yeah. change. Mm -hmm. Right? Is it's, that? It's also like if, like you said, if we do the research to find out what's out there, and then when we say this is the best one, we can mm -hmm. say it's still like we it's well, it's we have the facts to back up that this is well, the yeah, best one, not well, just. We've been doing it for 10 years, and they're the lowest they always have been. Mm -hmm. We have that information, so if the teachers' union or other members of town come and say, why are we paying so much? Yeah. Well, we have all this information, and you get this much more. Well, that's why we should it. have a, you know, get the committee together. And usually the rep from um, Maya comes out. Well, mm -hmm. I was not even aware there was such a oh, committee. So. yeah. We, we had a selectman quite a few years ago that tried, madam, to do something with rates in the in the teacher the teachers union went ballistic. No, I know. Oh, what, yeah. I, actually, I can tell you what they tried to do. They tried to go to having a single single with one dependent and family, because for people who are single with one dependent, mm -hmm. they would get a much better rate. But yeah. it made the family rates pop yeah. up. Yeah. So That's that was what, yeah, that was a change was. that they tried to do That's versus what it was. versus yeah. if we yeah. had a whole other like mm -hmm. selection, right? Yeah. yeah. There's there's actually a chance that depending on how many people took the high deductible plan, it might lower everybody else's mm -hmm. rates because there'd be some lessening of the risk on the insurance yeah. company. So that so that's that's, that's something a, we a, should work on for next yeah. year. So so it's I mean it's it's just a suggestion. It wouldn't obligate us to anything. They may just say no, we don't have anything mm -hmm. like that, but it it would give people a little more freedom of choice to yeah. get a little more in their paycheck or 
have control over the funds rather than doing it through the insurance. Mm -hmm. So, um, so the next thing on the agenda is we have a vacation rollover request, which um, I don't know if you all have gotten a chance to review it, but uh, uh, our principal assessor said that he has 12 vacation days yeah, left. Saw that. He's planning on <laughs> using seven of them. I actually applaud him for the fact that at least he's acting one proactively and two, he has a plan to burn at least most of the vacation. Mm -hmm. So um, I'd like to get a, a motion to um, accept his uh, request to roll over um, five vacation days mm -hmm. in July. Okay, I will give you um, a motion to roll over five days of vacation time for the principal assessor. I'll second the motion. All in favor? Uh, Aye. All right, so we have, uh, can I get a motion to, for us to sign the deeds for, uh, looks like we've got one, two, three, three cemetery plots, one for Teresa Grubbs. Um, one for uh, Marta Plough and one for Robert Wilson. Okay, I'll give you a motion to I'll make a motion to sign three cemetery deeds. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Agenda is to approve. Um, oh, sorry. Actually, we have two discussions. Uh, neither really have documentation. The first one is highway department activity and communication discussion. Um, I was going to reach out to Ryan and ask him for um, a couple of different things. One, we have been getting communications that are like what the you know the highway reports mm -hmm. and they don't they read kind of like the weather report yeah right so um i'm going to ask him for you know do we have cop looks like you've got copies there um, yeah, we all have copies. we've got some you know it's uh installed headlights a lot of vehicle work um treating the roads you know trash runs stuff like that um, some tree work that happened in January. Let's see here. Um, you know, includes things like some of the supply ordering and, and some of the, the details associated with um, different types of plowing uh, and cleanup from, from the various storms. Um, I'd like to see something a little bit more functionally substantive in terms of the communication. Um, and the other piece is, is that we don't have a lot to provide to the townspeople relative to the plans. Like we know we've got the big project coming with Central Street, but in terms of things like when are we going to start on potholes? You know, when would we expect to do some of the tree work, stuff like that? I think it would be good to get like some visibility. Because back when we had the little Brookfield citizen that Appleseed put out, that was one of the things that actually they, they started doing was providing a calendar out to the community of kind of like, hey, this is going to be going on during this time period. This, you know, We're going to do street sweeping at this time, and we're going to do some chip seal and, and what have you. And I think it would be good to get back in that habit of providing some transparency into kind of what the plan is. Um, but uh, I haven't, I haven't uh, 
actually had the discussion, is there any recommendations about what you all would like to see in either the plan or in the monthly reports for when I talk to Ryan? I, when I was reading through it, the one thing that I always looked for was kind of an idea of how much time some of these things took. Okay. Because if there is, you know, if they're going around and they're spending seven hours a day filling potholes. Okay, so like man hours associated yeah. with it, right? Or if they're, you know, if cutting down trees or whatnot takes many hours over many days, it'd just kind of be nice to know for a, like a maybe planning purposes in the future or for hiring right. purposes that we'll be able to see how much time is actually being like spent on it. I mean, so, so even yeah. if it's a roundabout. Where? Well, so, probably. so no, what I'm saying is what, what I think would be beneficial to um, the report would be tree work on this road, yes. this oh, section yes. of yeah. road, yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> filled all the potholes on this road, mm -hmm. and maybe a really beat up road. Yeah. So, so it may take, you know, three days to do exactly. it, so, yeah. you know, or that's, just that's caught this addition. pothole on this road, caught this pothole yeah. on that road, but mm -hmm. where and when? Was the word. Yeah, not no. not not yeah. to be funny, but versus a list in Word. Um, I'm sorry to like do this like a freaking on on the spot. It, you're drawing Excel. Yeah, I'm drawing <laughs> Excel, right? So it would be date, location, mm -hmm. uh, work completed. And then estimated hours, let's call it. Yeah, I'm not something looking long, for yeah, something You know, like just something like that. Yeah. Instead of something like this. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and then we can kind of work through like iterations of it of what it looks like, right? Yep. And I think that would help too, because I know a lot of people they'll post online or they'll just ask if you see them in town, like, oh, I have these tree problems here. They've been taken care of. I didn't. You know, they say they're cutting trees everywhere, but I never know where. It's like, oh, well, here you go. This mm -hmm. is where this is the street they were on. Yeah. This is the yeah. day they and, were and on. And was it was it the crew? Was it someone that they contracted out yeah. to? Was right. it National Grid? Who's doing the tree work? Yep. Who's, mm -hmm. who's performing yeah. the tasks mm -hmm. that are listed? Yeah, yeah. It, and it, it always comes up in the usually the winter because of the heavy snow and mm -hmm. ice and mm -hmm. you know just weather and things fall down all over the place. But so, it's the nature of trees. So fall. I think that he should also you know come up with something, a little explanation of what he's going to be doing also for uh, for his, you know, he's got some some money to do different projects like on Central Street and Green Street so that the people are aware of these too. Well, we don't we have final plans. We don't have plans. Oh, but, when we do, but when we do have the well, final yeah, that's, plans, that's, uh, well, I think... Well, the water he, department, well, they had their bid opening today yeah. and we got some decent uh, bids. Yeah. So oh, great. But they, but they should have something that will let the townspeople know just well, what they're doing. Well, it's all online. There's right. a yeah. whole page yeah. for it. Okay. There's a whole Central right. Street page that I created on oh, the website. Right. So everything that comes up that's new gets up there as soon yeah. as I get yeah. it, okay. it goes on. Yeah, so so we do have that information up on the website. but. Um, but I, I, I think to Linda's point, though, um, the details for Central yeah. Street are on the website. But it goes back to that. This would be the the more the highway report mm -hmm. style. Yes. And then mm -hmm. the plan would be, you know, literally kind of like March, April, May, right? March, April. Mud season. Fill in ruts. Right. Exactly. <laughs> right. So right. Exactly. Mud season. You know, uh, and that's like potholes mm -hmm. or. You know, whatever Fill roads with you know edges, right? <laughs> Fixing the edges from the yeah. from the mm -hmm. plow and that sort of thing. Um, you know, May might be the start. You know, start Central Street, and that and that may mean yeah. that other things aren't going on, right? And then mm -hmm. and and eventually get to the level of detail. Here's where we need to bring in the seasonal mm -hmm. hires. Here's when we're going to be dealing with the vendors and the contractors, that sort of thing. So. Um, are, are you all comfortable with me just having kind of like asking for that level of detail? Yeah, mm -hmm. sure, I don't see a problem with okay. that. All right, so. All right, cool. So that discussion is done. Thank you all. I just, I didn't want to go rogue. So, um, bylaw update discussion. All right. So. This lovely little packet is filled with possible bylaw changes. The first change, and this has been suggested by several people, mm -hmm. is to make a blanket 
article that changes the general bylaws to replace wherever selectman or select man appears with select board throughout the general bylaws mm -hmm. and the zoning bylaws. Yeah. So that would just, it's just one article. Just clean. It's just, yep. it's clean. Just, just replace yep. this everywhere it says this, we're going to put this mm -hmm. instead. Just to update the language. Um, section 12, holidays with pay. Juneteenth is now a holiday. Oh. So it needs to be updated. Otherwise, it matches the state holidays. Um, I, I think I talked to with you. Yes, I have an about, email about, about this before mm -hmm. about the holidays. Mm -hmm. But could it be changed to just be federal worded holidays. of no. federal of uh, state holidays? You want it to just say that instead of enumerating each holiday? Yeah. So then when I they don't, change I don't see it, why it no. can't. I so then when they change it, we don't have to keep changing the bylaws. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. And then I mean it, their calendars published with the state holidays. I mean we could always print them off at the beginning of the year too. Mm -hmm. But then that way we don't have to you know, if they start throwing in a bunch of holidays, right. we, don't, we don't have to mm -hmm. go change them or for some reason they take one off. Right. So the way you have it right now, your enumerated holidays, when Juneteenth came along it was on a weekend. Nobody got paid for it yeah, because right. it wasn't enumerated. So this would eliminate that. That would that would make it so that every state yeah. holiday would, if it falls on a weekend, we're not paying for it. If it does, we're paying for it. So just putting that out yeah. there. I have no problem with paying people for holidays, you know. Yeah. So, but it's it's something to think about. So you want to just change well, it so that I mean, what's the real, what's the real, I mean, what's the real cost? What's the, what's the upside cost risk impact to doing it oh, as a blanket? It's small. It is yeah. really, really yeah. small because we don't, we don't remove the holidays when we're calculating pay or add extras when we're calculating pay. Right. It's you're going to work this many It's just days. how much work you get. This versus is how many yeah. weeks how we have. Pay. This is yeah. how many yeah. hours a week you yeah. work. This is how many days you're getting paid yeah. for. Yeah. So there's no direct financial impact. There's a slight predict right. possible productivity mm -hmm. impact, but mm -hmm. it's, it's, but it's one day it's out of 200. Yeah. 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 So it's one day out of 200. And a lot of people will take the day off too, at least in my experience, that if there's a state holiday yeah, or a right. federal holiday. It is illegal for them to work. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Unless they're yeah. emergency yeah. personnel. We can't have the town hall open. No. We cannot make anybody work. On yeah. That. And at least if it's holiday. listed kind of generic you know, holidays yeah. of the Commonwealth, then mm -hmm. there's no question. So why don't we just do that? So that will include Easter as well. Because mm -hmm. that's a Commonwealth holiday. Mm -hmm. Right. But Easter always falls on a Sunday, yes, so Sunday. it doesn't really matter, does it? Does it? Because uh, other holidays that fall on the weekend, you get paid for. Yep. So that's maybe why we should really look at it. If Christmas falls on Saturday, you get to take Friday off, or you get you get Monday, Monday off. Monday. Yeah, and you get paid for it. Right? Mm. Yeah. Or Thursday yeah, yeah, off, yeah, yeah, and you get paid yeah, yeah, for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're not actually losing a day. No. So the same number of days get paid for. It. You just right. people get time yeah. off for it. Yeah. So it's like a floater when they have it on a Friday or a Monday. I don't see a problem with it, but how many I, I, how many additional days is it if we went with all the Commonwealth holidays? I don't know all the Commonwealth holidays. I know that there are fourteen, I believe, um, fifteen now with Juneteenth, mm -hmm. I think, and you have twelve listed, I believe. Because you should go with the co Commonwealth. I mean, we wouldn't want to go with um, like Boston does that Bunker Hill Day. We don't want to get involved with anything One, like two, that. Three, four. Is that in the... There's 12. Um, of state holidays? There's 12. According to Google, there's Massachusetts public holidays. Uh, is Juneteenth in there? Because yep. that yes. would Juneteenth make it 13. Juneteenth is in there. Yep. Yeah. Juneteenth Juneteenth is in there. Is so what ML, am I missing? MLK, Washington birthday. Evacuation day. Evacuation day. And yeah. Memorial Day, Juneteenth, Independence Day, Labor Day, Columbus Day, Veterans no. Day, Thanksgiving, day. Thanksgiving Christmas. Yeah. Patriots Day. Do we have that in our policy book? I mean, if the no, it's in the bylaw policy. The oh, we, didn't closed in. we didn't put the, we didn't put that in there. No, no. because it's a bylaw. Yeah. No, so. But I think you have twelve. Mm. We do. 12. We have the federal one in there too. I think we must have a federal. These are just Massachusetts. It's online. If you want to go look up the bylaws, go to the web page and then type in. Uh, bylaw in the search engine up in the top right corner and poof should be the first thing that shows up and then you're looking at September. section 12 
of the of the general bylaws. That's not it. But, mm. It's yeah, chapter chapter twelve. 12. Um, yeah, that's section chapter. I'm sorry. Thirteen. Twelve is miscellaneous. Eleven, maybe. No. Mm -hmm. Section 12, holidays with pay. Personnel by law. It's, it's chapter 15, oh, 15, section 12. Yeah. It's all the way at the end. Sorry, I was reading over your shoulder. That's right. Gotta make it searchable. That's 17. No, oh, personnel by law. Personnel board. Yep. No personnel yeah. bylaw. It's in the personnel bylaw. It should be at the very end. There it is. Yeah. There it's right there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, twelve. Fourth of July, Veterans Day, okay. Washington's birthday. So I don't think June Veterans Day. Isn't in I don't there think yet, so that would be thirteen. We do Veterans Day. Veterans Day is here. Okay. Yeah. So what is different currently then? Well, that's not helpful. So that June two, what Year's, day is that? Did we do that? Martin June Luther 19th. King. June nineteenth. Washington. Patriots. Memorial Day. Juneteenth isn't there. Fourth of July is. Labor Day. Columbus Day. Veterans Day. Thanksgiving. Oh, we do day after Thanksgiving. Yeah. Is that's what it is. It's we a, list that, Thanksgiving and day, day after, after Thanksgiving. Because it's a floater. Okay. Yeah. yeah, we list both of those. Yeah. Which so you get to have the day after I've Thanksgiving. I've never heard of that, so never that's interesting. Never heard of that either. That's yeah. interesting. Never we can't take that benefit away from No, because it's no. already in there. Because it's in there, yeah. yeah. So you'll have 13 if you add Juneteenth. And, so um, then we can't go with the com what the Commonwealth states, because the Commonwealth does not state the day after Thanksgiving. That is true. We would have to do that plus the day after things, or including the day after things. Yeah, I mean, if we wanted to simplify it, we could say state holidays plus the day after Thanksgiving. Hmm. Right? I mean, because other than that, it's aligned. Yeah. yeah that's, I've never heard of that. We've always done that. Adam. No, I, I'm just saying I've never heard of it. Like in every listed as enumerated as a yeah. holiday. Yeah. Like it's, it's always well, we, it, well, we call it but we we call it like a floater. You take a floater. Well, but that's always well if it's listed as a floater, it should be a floater. floater. If yeah. it's the day after Thanksgiving, you don't get to float it. Right. You it's take the, the day, day, day after, after Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Yeah. You can't decide, oh I want to take the day after the I want to take the fifth of July off as well. Mm -hmm. And not take the day after Thanksgiving. You can't do that. No, you can't. It's, it's so, a new rain. Yeah, it's not actually a flip. And then what a lot of them will do too, where Thanksgiving, the day before Thanksgiving, a lot of them will work until noon and then they'll just take vacation time for the rest of the yeah, day. Yeah, that's vacation. And they always post that. Yeah. So, all right. So all right. that's that one. Mm -hmm. um, then I was asked to review the part time employee status. So to, to get benefits in Massachusetts for. Uh, insurance purposes and retirement you have to work more than 19 yeah. hours yep. Yep. you have that you're part time 20 plus 20 to 35 hours and then you have full time is 35 and over so 35 is in both part time and full time mm -hmm. which is something that needs to be looked at um, and the only difference between the full-time and the part-time benefits is that part-time people get 10 sick days per year. Boom. There you go. 10 sick days. They don't roll over. So you can't accumulate them. Whereas everyone else has to earn one sick day a month. So if you, and this only affects three people, three positions. So, actually, two positions and one person who holds two other positions. So if you change the time for a part-time person to be over 19 hours, which is the benefited mm -hmm. portion of it, um, it will eliminate all of that. Yeah. 
inconsistency, and instead of getting 10 sick days, they'll get 12 sick days because they accrue one each month as opposed to beginning 10 at the beginning of the year. Right. So that was something that I was asked to look at, and I'm running it by you to see if it's something that you would support. I think it's reasonable to just clean yeah. that up to yeah. make it equitable. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I think the one thing we do have to be careful of, as I would prefer to see some language in there that says that like a sick day is scaled to a person's like average work day. That's moment. how we do it now. Okay. Yeah. They don't get, if they only work five hours, right. they get five hours off for a sick day. That's how we're right. calculating yeah. it for um, okay. purposes mm -hmm. of getting, because the, the people take them by the hour, but they can't take a day and use eight hours. If they only work a five hour day, they get five hours. Yeah. Right. So we're already doing that, but we can make it the language, we can put the language yeah, in Yeah, just make sure the language is in there so that nobody tries to challenge it fundamentally. Yeah. These were some, remember when you first um, came on with the personnel board, remember those are some things that we had discussed? Mm-hmm, yeah. yeah. And then chapter four, section one, the advisory committee. Um, there's a couple of things with the advisory committee. The advisory committee is, is the way this is written is really a financial committee, but they have the authority to review all Warren articles regardless of, of how they're composed. So I would suggest that you put financial articles, more financial warrant yeah. articles, so to clarify, because typically an advisory committee shouldn't be, or normally doesn't, I shouldn't say shouldn't be, but they, they normally do not opine on whether or not the library gets a, a new handicap grant using grant money and they need a matching grant or whatever. They, I mean, that is a financial one, but, you know, if, if we need to, I don't know, think, think of something that's not financial that comes up in a warrant. But they don't normally opine on things that do not mm -hmm. have a monetary, yeah. something that doesn't well, like, impact the like tax bi rate. Like bylaw like changes. Like this bylaw change, yes, yeah. exactly, yeah. So they, they wouldn't really, it's not really their function. Mm -hmm. Their function right. is yeah. to assist with the budget and not necessarily with the other areas. The other um, change is that you have a nine member board. So under the law of quorum is a majority of the committee as created, hmm. not the majority of the people who are as still appointed. actually on the committee. Yeah. Right. So the advisory committee right now is a five member board it's supposed to be a nine member board, which means 100% of the sitting members have to be at 100% mm -hmm. of the meetings. They can't hold a meeting if they don't have a quorum. So if one of them is out, they should not be, yeah. and I'm not saying they do this, because no. I, I don't believe they do, but a board should not be sitting and discussing things and then going, all right, well, we'll come back and vote later. No, no quorum, no meeting. And they can't afford to have that happen, especially during budget season. Right. Um, so I would suggest that you make it a five-member committee, and then you could appoint maybe a couple of alternates if yeah. you'd like. Yeah. I, I think what I'd like to see is a is up, up five, to two five member with up to two alternates, and then that gives them the option that if they can find yeah. enough valid volunteers to to have some folks in the wings to to yeah. support keeping keeping things rolling. Yeah. So that that's one of my recommendations for a bylaw change. Mm -hmm. One of the things that and then all the language within that bylaw would be changed to match yeah, the, new the, the new number. The new number. Yeah. Close to it. Right. And um, is there okay? Go ahead. Is there something in there also if they meet if they uh, miss so many meetings? That's already in there. That, they that, miss five. Yeah. They're considered to have vacated yeah. their seat. Mm -hmm. And it needs to be an excused meeting. And I think the bylaw. Except in the case of illness, mm -hmm. shall be deemed to be vacant. So if, if but it's consecutive meetings. 
Right. So, yeah. so if you can miss four and then miss and then come back for one and then yeah. miss four and come back for one, um, it, it's in. I've, I've seen this in a lot of yeah. different bylaws. So this is actually a good a good feature. It helps people yes. to realize that. And I do this think this is a genuine commitment. And I do think, like you said, it is a good idea to have alternates, two alternates. Mm -hmm. That was Beth's idea. Yeah, I was. So I'm gonna give her credit for that. <laughs> Even a broke clock's right twice a day. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So, all right. Yeah. So, so that was one of the um, another one of the suggestions that I had for bylaw changes. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and in part, that's a compromise because because they were actually looking to take it down to seven, and and seven mm -hmm. is still maybe too big. Yeah. But five with two alternates yeah. lets them have seven if they can find them. If they can find them, yeah. You know? and that gives them what they're mm -hmm. what they had actually initially suggested was seven. Yeah. And we um, want to keep them called advisory. We don't we don't want them to be called finance committee because a lot of communities call them finance committees instead of that's semantics they're doing yeah. exactly what the a finance work. committee yeah. would do so the name is really not because I, I know that a lot of communities though i just said they call them finance right. instead of advisory and because of the way this is written as an advisory yeah. committee advising on everything yeah. and anything mm -hmm. is is you know within the bylaws yeah. kind of you know anything to do with the town meeting mm -hmm. so um by changing it to finance or, or financial articles or monetary articles that actually makes them more of a finance oh, type okay. of board. It was just a question. Mm. It's it, it's like I said. It's just a matter of semantics. Mm. The name is you can name them whatever you yeah. like. You can name the luck, the Lucky Duck Society. I was going to say the Hokey Pokey. <laughs> oh, okay. It actually says in here. Uh, the selectman, after drawing a warrant for a town meeting, shall immediately forward a copy thereof to each member of said mm -hmm. committee, advisory committee. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they get it. And it says and, uh, that they are opine on all. Yeah. So I'm taking all out and They're putting in financial. All articles, questions, or matters referring to Proposition 2 and a half, so called. So, yeah, so, so, technic all, so technically, when it says all relative to Proposition Two and a Half, I think it that intended to limit it to financial, but it it, it, it has make done. an argument. Yeah, I don't believe that it has. Um, uh, from what I've I've mm -hmm. seen, I think that, and I don't think that they they have any desire to do more than the financial no, portion. No, yeah, actually, they typically have limited their input to, yeah. to the financial articles, actually. But this will just clarify it in yeah. case they get a member who wants mm -hmm. to be a little more aggressive in their, in yep. their um, assistance. Yep. So what we would do is we would strike the word all and insert, insert financial in front of the word articles. Right. Okay. And, and let me ask you something, and, mm -hmm. and I'm not advocating that we that we pay that committee because we don't typically pay committees most of mostly we only have boards. that is the one committee in all the towns that is absolutely denied any payment because they cannot have a financial interest i was going to ask about oh. the, i was going to okay. ask about the legality yeah. of that okay. yeah they cannot have a financial interest and typically you're not allowed to be on this committee which is another thing that's in here that you you allow anybody to be on this committee and they have to abstain but Correct. in many towns, not in all of them, but in many towns, there's a caveat that if you are on the finance committee, the advisory board, the finance board, whatever you want to call them, you are precluded from being on any other committee. Yeah. Well, I so that you, there's yeah. no conflict. There can never be. Yeah. It's about optics. There can yeah. never yeah. be anyone saying, "Well, you're doing this because you're right. on, I don't know, the the." highway department or you're on the board of assessors or you're on the board of health well you're the reason that they that. did that a few years ago because they couldn't get anybody to go nobody to go on the advisory board so that's mm -hmm. why they did it and like you said it has they would have to abstain yeah, from yeah. anything yeah. on their yeah. budgets that's it yeah. and so the language of section two would i think need to be updated too because it says the selectman an office uh this bylaw is adopted shall within 30 days. Yes, that's why I a said that three. All, of, yeah. all of the language so it would, be a would point need one. to match. Yeah. How would that work? Would it, would it be instead of appointing three, would it be a point one? So two? typically it's a one year, three year, five year term. Yeah. And then so you can have two and then one. So you have two one years, 
two two years and one five year mm. term, okay. and then the alternates can be appointed for however you like. But you can rewrite it however you want. That's just how I've seen it in other towns. It doesn't really yeah. You can actually you can put it as you could just you yeah. could just appoint appoint the members as required to yeah. fill the and fill the open terms. In and, some and towns, the the moderator appoints them, yeah. and they're good for one year. Yeah. And after town meeting, they're gone. Yeah. They're disbanded, mm -hmm. and then the moderator needs to reappoint for the next year. Yeah. So there are many, many ways to do this mm -hmm. board. Yep. Yeah, and there's even blended ones where some of them are selected by the selectmen, some of them are selected by the moderator, some mm -hmm. of them are crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. It's, this is kind of a, a, yeah. a wacky mm -hmm. um, setup. It's in comparison to what the other ones are. It's very uh, unique in its, its uh, configuration. Yeah, but that's because it's the town's equivalent of a Ways and Means Committee, so. Exactly. That's exactly what it is. So these, um, and I'm bringing these to your attention for you to think about mm -hmm. them, yeah. and okay. we'll discuss them further down the road, not too much further down the road, because we right. need it for the yeah. warrant. We're actually, we're actually that getting close, yeah. Could we for. have a, uh, maybe a copy Karen could do with the changes that you've talked about? Um, I'll have to type it up better, because this is in Kelly E's, <laughs> so it's okay. not necessarily coherent to anyone but myself. Okay. Um, <laughs> So, uh, but yes, I can, I can show her. It's, so once I do the actual Warren articles, you'll see what the actual okay. changes are All and right. how it's going to look. Mm -hmm. So the Warren article will show the Warren, um, and it won't show the whole bylaw as written. Normally what I would do is I would put in the chapter yep. and the section and the paragraph and the line and before this yep. and after this, and you'll see that section only. Yes. So the uh, finance boards, uh, the sorry, the advisory committee's section is four sections. Mm. You won't see all four sections mm. on the warrant. You'll only see the part that's being changed. That's good, because I know other times it's been the whole thing out. Yeah. yeah, and some people like to see that, but this information will be made available to mm. people as soon as it's yeah. been approved. Yeah. It'll be up on the website. We'll have handouts for it. Um, it'll all be handed out at the uh, budget hearing two weeks before the meeting. Because the warrant has to be closed by yep. that point and, yep. and ready to go out to town council. It has already been posted. So we'll be able to hand it out mm. so that people will have an opportunity to yeah. review it. And, with, and it'll say, you know, to see the full bylaw, there'll be a little sheet with it that tells yeah. them where yeah. they can get more backup information. Yeah. Um, just one follow up question I had going back to the part about changing wherever it says Board of Selectmen or Select Man or mm -hmm. anything like that. Would those changes also include, like the um, zoning bylaws? Yes, it order? would. There would be an article okay. for each because the zoning bylaw change takes a different vote. Okay. So it's a majority vote for general. It's two thirds for a zoning bylaw. Okay. okay. So there would be one article for each. For each one. Mm -hmm. okay. I think there's three separate bylaws. Or the personnel bylaw is, yeah. is part of the general. It's part bylaw. of the general. Yeah. 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 Okay. So it's just it appears in two. Okay, so the next one would be um, the Capital Improvement Planning Committee. You have a Capital Improvement Planning Committee. Um, it says that you have one member of the advisory board, one member of the selectmen, the treasurer, one member of the Brookfield School Committee or its designee, and three or more members of the community. That is a really vague number, first of all, three or more. Um, it's the one, two, three, four, Do we have one and right then, now? And then another two. three would be seven or more. That is a very, very large yeah. committee, especially for a small town yeah. where volunteerism is a luxury because everybody is so busy. Yeah. It's hard to find people who have the time to commit to these things. So um, what I was going to suggest was you make it one member of the community and you can add the town administrator's position to this particular board which would take up one of the other members um, i don't think having someone on the advisory committee is a good idea for the capital improvement planning committee because they they don't actually have a stake in the process it, it's good to have them as maybe an ad hoc member because they're going to go ahead and vote on the capital plan as a committee, mm -hmm. whereas nobody else is going to vote on the capital plan. 
according to this one. So this one needs some tweaking, but I haven't quite figured out how you want to, you know, what would be the best way to tweak it so that it would be a functioning, so, committee. functioning yeah. committee. We need yeah. it to be a functioning committee. And, and it says that um, the town accountant's an ex officio member. Um, the community members serve, I put as, ser shall serve a three-year term. And then the language was changed to make it so that it was only one community member. Um, We've had a difficult time, you know, trying to find people to go on it, and then a lot of people would say they were on it and they don't show up for meetings. Mm -hmm. And then you've got a requirement yeah. that they submit, they prepare and submit to the selectmen in February of every year an annual report mm -hmm. recommending capital improvement budget for the next fiscal year. But if you've got a five year capital plan, yeah. you already know what you're going to do. Yes. So yeah, you well, you're really well it, should be, it should be an annual update for the fifth year out, though. Right, so it's not that you need a five-year plan, it's that you need... You need an annual update of the five-year plan? Yeah. 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 Or a, okay, so or that's not the way this reads. reads. Yeah, it's bad language, yeah. but it, the yeah. intent is, is that the five-year plan get refreshed annually so that it includes mm -hmm. that fifth year out every year. Mm Then the other, the other um, bylaw changes are actually zoning changes, which I met with the planning board and discussed these with the planning board, and they voted to support them. I'm, I'm looking into what the process is because they're not necessarily substantive. So the use, the section four district and use regulations table. Although there's a paragraph above that says all special permits mm -hmm. are given by the planning board, there's one little rogue sentence in the use definitions that says a special permit is granted by the zoning board. That is a serious problem, child. And it's granting more than one principal use. Well, the definition of principal <laughs> is that there can only be is one. Can only be one. <laughs> it's either the, it's a primary use of yeah. a lot. And it's it's come it's it's created conflict. Yep. There are parcels in town that have four and five principal uses. Yeah. Anything other than what the attended zoning and the actual primary principal main use mm -hmm. of a lot is is an accessory it's use. Yeah. It's not going to prevent anybody from getting accessory uses. It's just going to properly define it. It's going to properly define yeah. it as it, principal use is a principal use. Yeah. So. I'm suggesting that this be removed, that um, section 4BC, more than one principal use on a lot may be allowed by special permit issued by the Board of Appeals, and the Board of Appeals is also on board with this, I've spoken with them as well. Great. Um, is to just eliminate that sentence. Yep. Then in the table, because people don't actually read the zoning bylaws, they jump right to the, the table tables. and go, oh, I can do any of these things. Mm. I don't know who to go to for a permit, is to add a column that says permit granting authority and just put planning board all the way down. Yep. <laughs> nice. Just to make it nice, yeah. and, nice and clean, nice and clean. Um, I did a little presentation for the planning board with how many times accessory use appears and principal use appears and definitions. And if I may. There's also on the planning board rules and regs, there are other permits that the on zoning board of appeals grants, like the mm -hmm. sign changes and so forth. But those don't appear in the use regulation table. Right, right. And so that, that actually isn't a bad thing, but it, it needs, if that's not something that you wanted to change, was it? No. It was just the use regulation table with the principal mm -hmm. use and accessory use confusion Perfect. that it created. Yep. Um, Wow, I have a lot of copies of this. So in the definitions you have for a zoning enforcement officer, the building inspector for the town of Brookfield or an individual appointed by the Board of Selectmen whose duty is to monitor or enforce the zoning bylaws of the town of Brookfield. So it's just an individual appointed by the Board of Selectmen because a building inspector is not your zoning enforcement officer. No. So taking out the building inspector for the town of Brookfield or Right. And mm -hmm. just making it 
An individual. An individual yeah. appointed by the Board of Selectmen yeah. whose duty is to enforce the zoning. Yeah. Uh, support field. So that was another change. And then Section 13, Administration, pulling out this bylaw shall be enforced by the building inspector or his agent or a zoning enforcement officer. So we'll pull out by the building inspector or his agent and just make it the zoning enforcement yeah. officer. That's right. Because if somebody doesn't reads this, they don't see Nick, they see Jeff, the building inspector, they're going to go to him and he's yeah. going to be like, I don't enforce I don't this. Enforce no, this. he doesn't enforce it. Well, then who's your agent? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to appoint mm, the electrical inspector. Yeah. <laughs> you need to, this just needs to be yeah. cleaned up. That's yeah, all. It does. So, so those were the other. Awesome. Yes. Okay, Seven that's a, good. 7A, the use regulation table, other. <laughs> other. <laughs> Can we get the other out of Wait there? Wait a minute. <laughs> the very bottom of the use regulation table, um, other, other uses that meet the intent and purpose of this bylaw. Were we pulling that out? I, I, I had sent you an email because I actually lost the notes I used at your meeting. So, um, hang on a minute. Let me see if I found it. If you have the use regulation table there, it's at the very bottom. I actually do not have the. Oh, oh, yes, I do. Ha <laughs> ha. Dun 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 dun. Quick reference provided by Sharon. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, use regulation table. Do people do people still come in and buy the disc with the zoning bylaws? I would hope not. It's not up to date. Right. Um, ah, there it is. Because I know I used to have a lot when I was town clerk. I had a lot of people used to come in and buy them. Yes. And, and okay, so I found it. And we were going to eliminate number seven, other uses. Any use, not eliminate it, we we're going to change it. Um, any use which meets the intent and purpose of this bylaw in the district in which the permit is sought. Ah, there you go. So that, because every district has a purpose mm -hmm. and an intent yeah. enumerated. Yeah. So if I'm pulling a permit in rural residential, and I want to put in a shoe factory, agriculture and housing are not the intent and purpose right. of Love this. That. Mm -hmm. So other can't be used in every single district. Right now, this particular one, the way it's written, written. can be used yeah. anywhere to put anything anywhere and basically make this whole thing null and void. Right. So this would just clarify it. Mm. And it gives the planning board and the zoning enforcement officer and the, and the ZBA somewhere to look to see, does this meet the use and intent? Oh, we'll look at the district that they're trying to go into. Yeah, it does. Have a good time. This works. No, it doesn't. We need to look a little deeper and see if we can find a way to make this apply, if that's the, the goal. Right. So thank you for reminding me about that one. I had a sticky on it and everything and completely forgot. And that, I believe, is the last. Do you remember any others? I think that's the last one, right? Great. Let's move to the in that instance. Thank you for sharing that. I yes. just wanted to get that on, on everybody's radar since you've been working very diligently at, yes. at identifying that stuff. Mm -hmm. so I know. I, I'm pleased, too, Kelly, that you've gone through them. Thanks. You've been a big help. <laughs> So. It's been a, it's been fun learning them. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of a bylaw yeah. junkie. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> That's a surprise. Uh, I know it's, it's weird. Hey, reading yeah. bylaws is fun. <laughs> I've read hours multiple times. <laughs> and the zoning board bylaws. And the zoning one too. Yeah. Never mind that. You should get hooked up with the zoning decisions coming out of the appeals court. Oh, they are so cool. No. <laughs> that, that's a little too much. <laughs> What we do on our Saturday summer. nights. Yeah, oh, that's, that's that's how I spend my downtime. <laughs> what are you doing? So, I'm reading a zoning decision. Did you see that you can put a dormer and a porch on and it does not increase the non-conformity of the lot? Can you believe that? Mm -hmm. Oh, really? All right, so can okay. I get a motion to approve the selectman minutes for 2 15 22 Hi. 3 1 22 and 11 7 14? Okay, I will give you a motion to approve the selectman's minutes as uh, Beth has read the different ones, different meeting dates. I will second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, can I get a motion to release the executive session minutes of uh, 1422 both sets? I, uh, 
I make a motion to release the executive session minutes of 1 4 22. There's two sets of them. All right. I will second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Um, got to get a motion to. We've already discussed them. Acknowledge yeah. the highway reports mm -hmm. for January and February 2022. So you want a motion? A motion just to acknowledge them. Okay, I'd like to make a motion to acknowledge the highway reports from January and February of 2022. I will second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 And we will provide some feedback there too, including my sketch. So I'll bring my <laughs> copy. Um, correspondence. We, we need to reach out to the governor and the lieutenant governor and tell them that Mr. Schneider is no longer the chairman. Yeah, the we line. do. We do. That's okay. I won't let my ego get hurt. We even had one so. that came in today for uh, Mr. Comptor. Mm. Intriguing. Yeah. So they they don't change him. They just keep. They have to go see his little plaza down in uh, Sturbridge. So it's a long story. Anyway, um, <laughs> another time. Then. Another time then. So, but we they are pleased to inform us, regardless if they're informing the right person or not, that. Um, um, our community's chapter 90 money will be $165,988 uh, for this year coming. How much is that again? 165 165988 Do we know how that compares to other years? I did not look. Okay. Mm -hmm. I would be interested just as a point of, I'd like to know if it's going up, going down, especially given how the expenses have gone up. I think we've, I think it's been higher all the years. I think it has been higher it's the been, years. It's been higher all the years. So, um, so we, it looks like it appears that Brookfield fire, um, was awarded, um, $3,675 for their standard safe grant and another $2,555 for senior safe. Okay. And basically it's to promote uh, fire prevention for all citizens. Mm -hmm. And then we've got a notification from Charter that um, um, unreturned equipment fees are going to decrease from 103 to 97 dollars for digital receivers, and for optical network unit, it will decrease from 260 dollars to 95 dollars. And then they also indicated that on March 28th, um, their Spectrum is going to launch Story TV satellite feed, and EB, SPP, EB, HD, and tier HD standard TV on channels 156 and 489. And then Spectrum Northeast uh, wants to make customers aware Fox Life will discontinue service on the 31st of March, 2022. And that's it for correspondence. Can I get a motion to adjourn? I would like to make a motion to adjourn at 728. I will second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.